Welcome to City on the Hill Kids Church Online. I'm Lola and I'm Jamie. You know, when you're given a gift, you don't always have to accept it. I like getting presents. Okay, that's nice. But today we're going to talk about the best gift ever. What's the best gift ever? Well, you'll find out after a time of worship. And so will you. I want to tell you all about my favourite present. What is it? Just listen. At Christmas there are presents Underneath the tree The train goes clang And the drum goes bang There's a gift that you cannot see Oh, the best present of all is Jesus The best present of all is God's Son. Yes, the best present of all is the one God gave to me. The best present of all is from Him. Underneath the mistletoe, Grandma gives me a kiss. <laughs> so I give her a gift I made myself. And I give it with a wish. May your best present of all be Jesus. May your best present of all be God's Son. May your best present of all be the one God gave to you. May your best present of all be from Him. Well, I wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. But most of all, I wish for you that Jesus would be near. A baby in a manger 2,000 years ago was the greatest gift that we will ever know. May your best present of all be Jesus, may your best present of all be God's Son. May your best present of all be the one God gave to you. May your best present of all be Jesus. May your best present of all be from Him. Our words tell us and other people who we are and what we think. As a matter of fact, whatever is deep in your heart is what you will say and how you will behave. And that lines up exactly with what the Bible says. The Bible says, from the fullness, from Everything that is in your heart, that is what you say. That is what your mouth speaks. So, if you have a good heart, you will say good things. You will behave in a good way. I know that you would say, oh, but what if you've got bad things in your heart? Are you going to behave bad? Well, actually... Yes, and you'll say bad things. I must say that human beings can't, are not able to say and think good things all of the time. There's only one person that has been able to think and say good things from his heart and show that in his behaviour. Can you guess who that is? That's right. It's Jesus. Now, there's a book in the Bible called The Gospel According to John that has these words. So it goes like this. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him, 
all things were made. And without him, nothing was made that was made. He was the life, and the life was the light of men. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. He is the only son from the Father. Now, the word is Jesus, and the Father is Father God, who sent his word, that is Jesus, to be with us here on earth. Now, God the Father, he is good, and his word is good. Remember what I said? From the fullness of your heart, you have your words, you speak. And God's word is good. And his word is Jesus. And Jesus is good. But how did we know when the word became flesh and dwelled among us? Essentially, how did we know when Jesus became a human being? That's what we're going to find out today in our story. Here's what happened. Mary was visited by Angel Gabriel. Angel Gabriel told Mary that she was going to have a baby from God. And when that happened, that she was to name him Jesus. And that's what happened. Around that time she had the baby, some shepherds were seated on the ground, watching their flock at night. Actually, there's a song about that. I think I'm going to sing the song and that will tell you part of the story. Are you ready for that? While shepherds watch their flock by night all seated on the ground The angel of the Lord came down and glory shone around Fear not said he, for mighty dread had seized their troubled minds. Good tidings of great joy I bring to you and all mankind. To you this day in David's town is born of David's line. The Saviour who is Christ the Lord, and this shall be the sign. The heavenly baby there shall find to human view displayed. All meanly wrapped in swathing bands and in a manger laid. Thus spake the seraph, and forthwith appeared a shining throng of angels praising God who thus addressed their joyful song. All glory be to God on high and on the earth be peace. Good will henceforth from heaven to men begin and never cease. Now that's the song, and that's essentially the story of how the shepherds were seated on the ground, an angel gave them the news about the birth of Jesus Christ, and more angels came and they were praising God. Anyway, shepherds and quickly got up and said, let them go to the city of David. Now, the city of David is Bethlehem. So, shepherds said, let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that the angel has told us. And that's what they did. And that is exactly what they saw. They saw Mary, Joseph, and baby Jesus in a manger. And they were so happy. And they told everybody in Bethlehem that cared to listen. They didn't keep the news to themselves. They shared the news. And the people that heard were amazed. Now, I'll tell you a thing or two about shepherds in those days. People never behaved very nicely to them because they felt they were poor. So they were all haughty-taughty around the shepherds. 
And yet, it was the shepherds that were told about the birth of Jesus Christ first. And they never kept that news to themselves. They shared it with everybody that cared to listen. So that's how Jesus was born. God gave Jesus to us as our saviour because Jesus was born to take the punishment that we were supposed to have because of all the wrong things that we've done in the past, the wrong things we may be doing right now, and wrong things that we may do in the future. Can you imagine that? And Jesus, because he loved us, and God, Father God loves us too, he accepted to come down and be born. He accepted to be given to us as our saviour. As a matter of fact, there's a verse in the Bible about that, John 3, 16. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whosoever believes on him shall not die, but have eternal life. John 3, 16. So Jesus, he is the gift to the world. And you know what? He is the best gift ever. Are you ready to accept this gift? If you are, Lola and Jamie will give you a chance later. That's it for this week. Bye. Merry Christmas. Well, we're nearly there anyway, aren't we? Almost. Mm. I can't believe it's so close. Mm. 13 days. <laughs> this is exciting because we are back in a studio together. Together again. Together. And for our Christmas crafts. So excited. So exciting. So, today Ivy was talking about how Jesus is the best gift ever. Ever. And I thought what we would do is use a cracker to illustrate this. So, I've got some crackers here. What do you think is inside this cocoon? Mm. I just don't know. A surprise! And that is because it reminds us that when the angel Gabriel came to Mary, that was a total surprise mm -hmm. for her. So that is the first bit of the story. Right, shall we? Let's. Three, mm -hmm. two, one. Ah! You won! <laughs> you won! And but you get a little bit of a fright, don't you, when mm. the bang goes off. And that is like the shepherds. When the angels came to the shepherds, they were... They were frightened. They, they were scared. Yeah. They were scared. So that reminds us of the next part of the story. But then the shepherds went to the stable in Bethlehem and they, they did find baby Jesus. It was true. And he was, thank you, he was the baby king, God's son, yeah. sent to save us, which was amazing. But then there's something else to come, isn't there? Oh, oh what have you got? It's a mystery calculator. It's a, oh, it's a, it's a little <laughs> who knows <laughs> trick what that thing. is. So anyway, Not you get the best present. No, you the... get a gift in a cracker, don't you? You do get a gift, and it's never the best gift. It's not the best gift in the world, no. <laughs> yeah. But that's okay because we know who the best gift in the world is. Jesus. <laughs> So, what we're going to do is we are going to make crackers for our craft because this helps to remind us of this story. So, what do you need? First of all, toilet roll two, and you need empty piece of paper. Thank and you. so, you want your paper to be not too thin so that it's not going to rip, but also not too thick or else it's harder to work with. So, something like this is good. And you need to cut it so it's like a bit longer than your toilet roll tube and so that you can just wrap it round so it's just the right width to wrap all the way around and then I think if you put some tape on there okay now so this is kind of the shape of your cracker what you need to do next is make these pinchy end bits and I've discovered the easiest way to do this is with a boot lace you need something quite strong and you put it around and then ooh, ooh. <laughs> Too strong. Okay. You have to give it a good pull in. Okay. So one end and then pull in the other end. Okay. Uh, 
There we are. Not quite so rough. There we are. There we are. <laughs> and then after you've done that, you can then stick these bits of cardboard together, or these bits of paper. It's better not to do it before you knit the ending, because actually it makes it quite difficult to do that once it's stuck. So I will just stick these. How's it going? It doesn't actually matter if it doesn't look very tidy at this stage because we're going to put some ribbon over the top afterwards. Anyway, right, so then you've got it stuck all the way along. So, for these, you know, these bits on the cracker, if you've got some of this wrapping ribbon, that looks really pretty, mm -hmm. but you could just use, you know, wool or string. That would be a nice classic look, but this is fun because you can curl it up. So you need to cut this piece for each end. Now, if you start just by tying one end. Oh yes, don't tie both the ends yet. Both end yet. And once you've tied it round, if you take your scissors and go kind of scrape along, it makes that nice curly edge. Oh, you can just do it with your fingers. Yes. Now, don't tie the other end yet, because we need to put presents. Now, I think sweets are a good present, to be honest. Oh. Never a disappointment. So, no. always yeah, is. Here we, are. Uh, we have a selection. Oh, that one was too, that fell out of my hole. I need bigger sweets. I'm going to put a stick in there. It's going to be generous. Yeah, why not? Be generous. There we go. Stuff it full. And then, tie up the other end. So maybe just a little bit of tape or some glue. We could stick that on. There we are, let's take the polish. Thank you. And there you have a cracker. And they wouldn't actually crack because I haven't put cracks inside. You can't just shout. buy cracks. You'd have to go, yes, bang! <laughs> <laughs> that would work. Um, but I think this would be quite a nice present for somebody. You could put a label on there or you could put them on your Christmas tree. That would be really lovely. And as you gave them, you could tell them about how it reminds us of the story of how Jesus was born. Nice. nice. Oh, very yeah. good. I'm going to make some of these. What cool. about you guys? Do you think you're going to make some Christmas crackers? What sort of surprise do you think you're going to put inside them? Mm. Oh, it'll be great. So, we are going to be back again next week with yeah. the Christmas crack from Natalie. Yes, some more Christmas. Merry Christmas, everybody. Lola, the shepherds were looked upon as poor people, yet... The angel announced the birth of Jesus to them first. I know, right? The news wasn't given to the high and mighty people or the priest or the kings first, but to poor people. I bet you that if the news was given to all those sort of people first, they would have kept it all to themselves and the poorer people would think that Jesus wasn't really necessary for them. Yes, Jamie. The angel clearly said... I bring you great news of great joy for all people, which means absolutely everybody. And that good news you can find in John 3, 16. Do you know the song about it? If you do, join in. Ready, steady, go. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. That whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Eternal life, eternal life, eternal life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well done. And that is the best gift ever. Are you ready to accept it? If you are, repeat this prayer after me. 
Father God, thank you that you love me. Thank you for the gift of Jesus. That is the best gift ever. I'm sorry for all the wrong things I have done. Please forgive me. I choose to accept Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for saving me. Amen. That's it. Now you've got the best gift ever. Until next time. Bye. Bye.